And we all must search. We must search for what is truth. What is truth? Truth is... Truth is just... Uh, when, that's a really hard question. What, what is, is truth? truth? There has to be a fixed truth, in my opinion, for the universe to function properly. What is truth? And the lonely voice of youth cries, what is truth? And the truth shall set you free! The opinions expressed in the following program are the responsibility of the program's producers and not necessarily the opinions of Country Road Productions or its manager. There you go. Hello and welcome to Truth Ministries, What is Truth Radio Show. I am your host, Dave Glander. You're listening to WIMO 1300. I am ecstatic about our show today. If you're listening, I just thank you in advance because I know that the playoffs are on. And as much as I love football and uh, and would love to just sit here and, and, and watch a football game, I also love truth more than anything else. And, and once again, we're going to really be dissecting a, a controversial sh- subject today where uh, we've got on the on the line with us today Joe Taylor, who is the uh, curator and the president of, of Mount Blanco Fossil Museum out in Texas. Joe, are you with us? Yes, I am. Joe, normally I have a uh, bio to read on, on people beforehand, but I forgot. We, we got to talking earlier today, and, and, and I was just so intrigued by the entire conversation, I forgot to ask you if you had a bio. Could you tell us just a little bit about uh, who you are and where you come from? Well, I was born and raised in Mount Blanco, Texas, a little farm community out here in West Texas. My dad was a farmer and a cowboy, and uh, we were church people. And uh, My dad was a primitive Baptist minister. Uh, of which denomination I belong to, <clears throat> and I went to art school after a little bit of college, a uh, little, little bit of time in the Army, <clears throat> and then a little bit of time in New York in 67, 68. Uh, did a little time in Dallas and ended up in <clears throat> Los Angeles in 69 to uh, <clears throat> work in the music industry and the uh, art business, and that's what I did till I left. <clears throat> uh, I did all kinds of art, everything from uh, corporate trademarks to lettering, which uh, is on, now used on computers. Uh, <clears throat> murals. I did a lot of paintings of uh, record albums and also album cover design, book covers, <clears throat> uh, all I, I sorts s- of stuff like that. I saw that Bone Digger video that was put together about you, and that is uh, that is one heck of a life that you have lived. I, I was telling my son on the way over here that that uh, you're the kind of guy I could just see sitting around on the front porch talking about stuff and listening to stories and and i'm sure you've got stories upon stories upon stories so i would love to uh, love to sit around and do that how do how are you uniquely qualified for our conversation today as far as uh, paleontology is concerned well in 1980 actually 78 i started collecting bones whenever i'd come home to texas didn't know much about them <clears throat> discovered some big bones went to the american i mean to the museum of natural history in, in uh, la they told me what they were big bison <clears throat> and uh, all this evolution stuff and I volunteered for the La Brea tar pits out there <clears throat> and uh, worked with dire wolf uh, vertebra and and really got to know several uh, paleontologists these guys were with degrees <clears throat> some of them went on to be pretty prominent and uh, most of them were not only not Christians some of them were just downright antichrist <laughs> and, well they were they'd tell you I mean they were virulent about it yeah but they knew bones <clears throat> And when, when I restored one of my buffalo bones with some new uh, fireable plastic clay that I had and colored it with, with stuff I didn't even want to color it with, <clears throat> uh, I didn't know what that, that stuff took for paint. Uh-huh. But I took it into them, and one of the colors I used was curry. Well, you could smell the curry. Yeah. And, but it looked just like the bone, exactly like the bone. The detail was there. And uh, these <clears throat> paleontologists used to work with that stuff, couldn't tell it was real bone. Finally, one of them realized that that end was heavier and he says, whoa, was this this plastic you were using, talking about? Yeah. I said, yeah, that's all fake on the end. Oh, man, so you're dangerous. And so... You're dangerous. <clears throat> yeah, because I can make restoration look just like the real bone. Oh, okay. That, that's unusual in the business. They they don't always have that kind of type uh, uh, you know ability available. Yeah, but that, that <clears throat> comes from your art background. Yeah, and then I learned to mold. I taught myself how to mold. And since then, I've become one of the premier molders of stuff that's impossible to do. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so from there, 
I, I was also helping raise a bunch of kids that weren't mine, but they became mine. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't go back to uh, <clears throat> to school, so I asked these guys after I'd been there a few months and uh, volunteering, and I said, "Do y'all think I can, can uh, become a paleontologist without going back to school?" And they said, "Yeah, we'll help you." So they started giving me all their books, and I'd read all that Latin, and I thought, "Well, it's got to be a little bit like Spanish." So <laughs> I just kept reading it till I sort of figured it out. <clears throat> wow! I'd talk to these guys, I'd ask them questions. I was interested because they were yeah. really in, in stuff made by my God and Creator. Yeah. And uh, they didn't acknowledge that, but I wanted to know what they knew about it. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> but the art opened doors everywhere I went. And then, you know, since I knew somebody, I could say, hey, uh, <clears throat> Professor So-and-so or Dr. So-and-so said something about, oh, yeah, well, come on in. You know, <clears throat> then you're not just a tourist or yeah. somebody. So that, and then because the, my artwork would then help them, the next guy... You know, because I was fascinated by their own stuff. They'd open up their personal collections. Yeah. You know, I, I got in their basement collections, and they'd get down there and, oh, you know, that thing on the bison, look, I'm going to go give a paper. Yeah. And they give me a paper which defined the difference between buffalo bones and cow bones. Yeah. This is valuable information. Of course. Stupid cows. You know, people think, oh, we don't want a cow. Well, everything you can know about a dinosaur, you can know about a cow. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you know the cows, <clears throat> then you know the, and the differences. Well, you know, that's important stuff. They're all made by God. Uh-huh. If we didn't, if we'd never seen a living cow and we had dinosaurs everywhere, everybody'd be fascinated by cow bones. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. That's a that's a very good point. Let, let let's uh, we're actually going to jump ahead uh, just because you're talking about the cow bones and the dinosaur bones. You you were saying something on the phone, and, and I know this is jumping way ahead, and we're actually going to come back to to a topic that that uh, me and Aaron discussed last week, and I wanted to really get your expert opinion on that. Um, but you're jumping ahead to the cow bones. Talk about the C uh, C14 dating. And and the relation to the cow bones and and bison bones and stuff like that that you were telling me about earlier because that that was that was that was phenomenal information that I that I thought needed to really go forward. Well, people have heard of C14. Carbon 14 is uh, uh, exists in living uh, uh, beings and animals, and once they die, that starts breaking down into something else. <clears throat> so uh, they decided how long carbon 14 lasts before it turns into something else. So depending on how much of it's there, <clears throat> then that gives them some idea of the age. And that's all based on the assumption that the atmosphere and the world conditions have always been the same. So <clears throat> even though they get a date of a 2,000-year-old uh, Egyptian temple, which tells them this is 2,100 years old, give or take 300, 400 years, maybe that's correct. <clears throat> but then they date mammoth bones and stuff like that, and they get dates of 10,000 or 20,000 or 40,000. Well, I don't believe those dates, <clears throat> but why? The, they're getting carbon. Well, why? They're why? But b- back up. Why? Mm. Why you don't believe those dates, though? Because that, that's well, in in the secular community. That's that's kind of a bold claim to say that. So let's let's yeah. let's qualify well, that. <clears throat> number one, it doesn't agree with the Bible. Number two, if I can get the same amount of carbon, if I can get the same carbon date from a dinosaur, uh, from China, from America, <clears throat> as from a mammoth, from America as from a bison killed by the the Indians. If I'm getting the same carbon dates. What's wrong with carbon dating? Okay, so what you're saying is is you're getting the same carbon dates from different species, ones that have that have have been speculated to be millions of years old, all the way up to just uh, several hundred years old from mm-hmm. different parts of the world, and they're all agreeing with the same carbon date. That's right. And, now, and why is that not being published though? Well, that's what we're trying to do. Okay. This this has been done before, but it I mean it gets uh, hidden because that goes <clears throat> that would prove if you can date dinosaur bones with carbon fourteen, however old they really are, you know they're not millions. Okay. Well, there goes evolution because evolution depends on millions of years, so that maybe these miraculous changes could happen in there and turn from a frog into a, a lizard into a person. Sure. You were so, you were talking about that you had gone to present your evidence at at, a, at an important event, in, and I believe you said California. What what happened? Yeah, it was the the American Geophysical Union, which we uh, joined, uh, two or three guys and I, <clears throat> uh, when it, we made the made uh, submitted a paper, which they rejected. We submitted for a poster, which they rejected. So we went out there and, uh, you know, went around trying to get them to reconsider, knowing they weren't going to. Then we went out on the street and passed out invitations to come up to our room. We'd give them a presentation. Then we took the posters out on this where they, everybody was coming back and forth and uh, told several hundred people about what we had. 
most of them were pretty attentive, especially the Europeans and the uh, the Orientals. Uh-huh. They were very interested. <clears throat> and uh, in fact, we went and told we went to the display there where they were a lot of these uh, companies that work in in the geophysical field, you know, with oil wells, uh, strata, water, environments, uh, uh, things like that. <clears throat> And the fellow, the fellows that had done the carbon dating for us were there at their booth. They didn't had never met any of us, uh, <clears throat> and didn't know they were dating dinosaur bones all this time. They just were dating stuff, just uh-huh. like they're supposed to, without any any prejudice. <laughs> when when the older gentleman among us told this guy, "Did you know you've been dating dinosaur bones?" He said, oh, no, no, not possible. He's a Russian. Yeah. He said, oh, "Yeah, this date right here, that's from Hadrosaur." No, no, no. This is Hadrosaur. Yeah, this guy right here dug it up. Oh, it's not not possible. Yeah, yeah, those are dates. Well, he was shocked. He was stunned. Because <clears throat> what's he going to say? Oh, well, my dating's no good. No, 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 man. You're the top guy in one of the top labs in the country. You don't make mistakes. Uh-huh. They pay you a lot of money for this. You know, these dates <clears throat> are, are not bogus. That's the date. Well, he stuck by them. And we had, we had, uh, see, they didn't really know what we were well, why, doing. Why did they reject you in the first place? I mean, what, I, what, what is, what is your assumption as to, to why they rejected you? They, they, something about, well, this doesn't fit in with, uh, <clears throat> the, the category we have submitted it to, but, but we felt like, well, gosh, it sure does. What, what didn't fit in? The dating method or the our, evidence our that you were working right. with? The abstract, the fact that we were dating dinosaur bones, <clears throat> that should have given us a paper and a present, uh, and a poster. So that we could say, look, fellas, y'all saying this stuff is millions of years old. You're saying the Earth is millions of years old because of <clears throat> of uranium dates are thousands, tens of thousands of years old by by carbon fourteen. They're not, and y'all know it. And this guy, he said, oh, there's 120,000 carbon dates done every year. And oh yeah, but not on dinosaur bones, sir. Yeah, we're the only ones doing that. Yeah, unless y'all are doing it and you're not telling anybody. And yeah. they do. I think they date plenty of them. They get those dates back. Well, you know, this hadrosaur can't, it's 65 million, it can't be 35,000 years, it must be contaminated, so they throw the date out. Yeah. Well, we don't throw the dates out. I've heard heard a lot about that, that if it doesn't fit the model they're looking for, they'll actually render the dating uh, uh, inadmissible and and actually just discard it from from evidence. And and so it's it's like looking for the the truth, and and you're finding varying dates, but you only Mm -hmm. keep the ones that agree with your your presupposition, your worldview in the first place. And that, uh, that to me, is not a a genuine scientific approach, to be quite honest with you. No, it's not science. Why why do you think think the, the scientists won't just go ahead and 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 admit to uh, to the fact that they, these bones may not be as old as as what they once presumed them to be. For one, they would all have to give back their degrees. <laughs> they'd lose their jobs. Their wives would divorce them. Their kids would have to drop out of. Uh, why Why do you say they'd have to give back their degrees? Well, we uh, <laughs> one of the people. I won't even tell you anything about them. One of the people that <clears throat> was listening to our presentation was, uh, you know. They knew half the people I knew, and, and they were in a, a major uh, paleontological museum in the United States. And the person said, do you realize if I told my boss that I thought there was validity to these carbon dates of dinosaur bones, I would be fired? I said, sure, we know that. Yeah, that that goes hand in hand with with what we actually started the series out when I had Dr. Judkins and Dr. Bergman on, and we discussed the suppression of the mm-hmm. truth and the blacklisting of scientists who even mentioned intelligent design. God forbid they mentioned creation or creationism; they were they were even further blacklisted. But just even the mention of intelligent design got them blacklisted. Mm-hmm. You you had said something funny while we were on the phone a little while ago about uh, while you're working with these guys. Uh, it, 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 you're just, you're just two guys. You're, you're not a creationist and an evolutionist. You, you're just two guys examining the evidence. And, and you said something real funny about that. Why don't you, would you well, share that I with was, us? Yeah. On the, the Waco sudden death mammoth site, uh, which is a big deal now, they're trying to make it into a state park or a national park or something <clears throat> down at uh, Waco University. I worked on that site for 10 or 15 years. I molded two big mammoths on the ground, <clears throat> never been done before. Well, one of the students there was working on our paper under the fellow I was working with. Uh, we were, you know, working on the bones out in the field, and something was said about this and that. <clears throat> and uh, I said, well, when, you know, when I'm talking to these evolution guys, we don't we don't discuss evolution. You don't? Why not? I said, because there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> there's nothing to discuss. There's nothing in evolution to talk about. Yeah. You That's... can talk about the bones, the dimensions, 
you know, that the facet on this, <clears throat> this uh, metatarsal is different than another one, that's all hard science and facts. But to say that this one evolved into that one, now we're making stuff up. I was just about to say, is that what is that what you're saying? Is is you can't talk about anything evolutionary because of the fact that there's no evidence actually pointing to tra- to- pointing towards transitional mm-hmm. records. No, it's like one day uh, uh, Bob Bacher, <clears throat> Doctor Robert Bacher, he's one of the I consider him one of the uh, bri- most brilliant minds in all of paleontology, and a funny guy and uh, extremely knowledgeable. We were standing there looking at a Velociraptor skeleton from China, <clears throat> and uh, I was filming him talking about it. He was showing me, oh, see, this is uh, the the foot here that shows they're turning into birds. And <clears throat> I had other, another paleontologist tell me that, yo, you look at T-Rex, he's fixed his feet, turning into a bird. Like, what bird? An ostrich? <laughs> Well, I mean, look look at a T Rex. If he's why do you know what what bird is he going to become? The elephant bird. Yeah. Nobody's saying that T Rex became an elephant bird, but he's more close to the elephant bird than he is to a sparrow. Well, Come on. well is there evidence that that birds actually predate dinosaurs? Well, <laughs> there was a in nineteen uh, two thousand five at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology up in Denver. Uh, on Friday afternoon, the last paper given was given by this guy who wasn't even on the, the, the roster. He wasn't even in the program. The place was full. He gets up and he shows that he found bird feathers <clears throat> in, a, in the Triassic rock, supposed to be 200 million years old or more, over in Russia. And this is before dinosaurs and could even become dinosaurs to become birds. <laughs> and he gave the paper <clears throat> at the end of it. I never saw so much response. People jumped up. They raised their hands, you know, in their question and answer. And, and, and this guy... And, and, and were, they, were, they, were they mad about that, or, or were they oh, yeah, genuine yeah, in upset. asking questions? They were upset because what he was saying was birds predate dinosaurs. Well, no, no, no. Uh, no, sir. Well, because that flips the entire we, evolutionary paper. model on its head, does it not? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that messes up everything. A bird <laughs> with feathers? Well, the man just said, well, you might just say it. It's a bird. And I thought... I, I thought I could see him looking on both sides of the room to see if he had an exit point, you know. Finally, I think he's thinking, you know, I don't know if I get out of this alive. So he says, well, you know, uh, uh, I can see that uh, 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 birds, uh, you know, feathers were developed before they were needed. Yeah. Okay, now we're clapped. <laughs> that's that's thought, just funny. ridiculous. Let me give out the was, phone number right quick, Joe. If you have any questions, the phone number is 678-963-5482. Once again, you can call anywhere uh, in the world. Just dial in 678-963-5482. If, uh, if you'd like to ask your question online, you can go to Facebook and just look up What is Truth Radio with Dave Glander and just hit the like button. You can submit your question right there on, on the page. Uh, uh, we, we've got Shannon McDaniel is operating the systems back here, and he will get you. Uh, he will get that scene, and I will get it uh, over to Joe. We'll get that answered. Joe, my my son Mark is actually sitting here, and he asked me a question. He shot it through text, and I'm actually going to have him ask you that directly. He is uh, he is 14 right now in the middle of the public school systems, and I told him on the way over here. I said this is a real a real deep topic. Um, one of those that definitely needs to be uh, addressed with with teenagers. Uh, go ahead. I, we we think his mic is on. He's loud enough. Yeah, it's done. Hey, Joe, what do scientists state dinosaurs to be? How old? They would say that the Cretaceous is the end of the dinosaurs, and that would be 65 million years. And uh, when they're looking at T-Rexes and Hadrosaurus, Triceratops, you'll hear dates of 65 million, 67 million, and it's usually right around in there. The Jurassic, the long-necked dinosaurs, and the Allosaurs, they're going to say they're 140 million, 80 to, you know, 100 to 140 million. And then you get back into the so-called Triassics, uh, you've got Coelophysis there, and they want those to be like 180 million to 200 million. And uh, <clears throat> then, then you get back into the Permian, and uh, if you found, you know, there's supposedly no dinosaurs there, although there's a lot of weird stuff, uh, <clears throat> just as complex as anything today. But, but these, these are hundreds of millions of years in there. If you find a bird in with that strata, it's a big problem. Yeah, and it's a huge well, problem. That's, that's a Dr. monstrous Chatterjee, problem. <clears throat> Dr. Sankar Chatterjee over here at Texas Tech uh, in, near, near here and was digging down on one of the ranches south of here where my brother used to work <clears throat> and found a couple of birds and a primitive mammal, he says, in with his phytosaurs, which are supposed to be 180 million years old. And he has suffered... Here's a guy who had 
every reason not to tell that he'd found a bird because he's managed to keep his job at Texas Tech. But I looked at the bird, the bones, and I told his artist, I said, well, it fits my presupposition. That looks like a crow. Uh-huh. And, and what did he it's say? A bird. <clears throat> well... You know, I, I'm, I'm just, they, I'm just curious, Joe. I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm speaking for a don't. huge portion of America when, when, when I hear somebody such as yourself, who's a, who's a qualified paleontologist, which is, which is something I wanted to note about that evidence you were trying to bring before the, uh, before the board in, in California that you had said you followed all, the entire protocol. This wasn't some, you know, wackadoodle sitting out on the street handing out flyers. You actually filed the correct protocol for everything. You, you submitted the correct paperwork. You, you filed everything on time. And the, and still got rejected, not because it wasn't scientific, not because you weren't filing the right protocol, not because of any other reason other than they just didn't like the content. So when I'm sitting here talking with somebody such as yourself, and I'm hearing this, this, you know, I'm talking to him. It tells I I tell him it looks like a crow. My mind is trying to wrap itself around what happens behind the scenes where we get because all we get to see Joe is newspaper clippings, school textbooks. And and when I by the time you get those those have been so rendered uh, in, in, towards the mm-hmm. towards the the evolutionist worldview or the evolutionist model that we don't really get a clear picture of stuff. So no, so when I, I ask you those questions, filter. that's why I'm doing it because I really think I'm speaking for a large portion of us that are going, okay, why are they not seeing this then? So when when you say it looks like a crow fits my worldview, what is what is? I, I guess if if Christian, here's what I'm trying to say: if Christians are always backed into a corner and we're always the one having to make an apologetic or a defense. Or an argument. What is what is the argument from their side? Uh, usually silence. That that artist just looked at me, and you know he didn't say anything. What, what's he going to say? You know yeah. he doesn't want to lose his uh, working with his uh, top professor here. The top professor. Um, <clears throat> what's he going to say? You know, yes, it's a bird, but it's a primitive bird and all that sort of thing. Yeah, but it's still a bird. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the best thing you've ever found. You're famous for it or infamous for it. Yeah. Uh, and he has pretty well played that down all these years. When the artist painted the cover for his book, he gave it sort of a lizardy face. Uh, it's like, come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, <clears throat> that's not fair. That's art. The, I was See, just going to say. A lot of people are convinced of this stuff by art. I'm an artist. Yeah. I do this stuff for a living. Yeah. It's just art. Art is nothing but imagination a lot of times. It's just there's nothing there but art. Yeah. Well, that's not science. Yeah. <clears throat> That's so, that's I, I, their answers in Genesis has a, a teaching that they have that that a friend of mine did the youth and and one of the guys I, I can't remember what his name was but he he has this little little teaching party does and he goes show me the beef remember the old Wendy's commercial oh, yeah. and his show where's the beef you know where's the beef yeah. don't don't take me through these museums where you walk through a bunch of depictions. Like you're saying, artwork, and it's just one picture after another. They even put together fanciful videos uh, depicting what they would have swam like or mm-hmm. flown like or yeah. walked like. And yet when you get to the end of all these pictures and videos and stuff, there's this tiny little two-inch by two-inch little fragment of a bone. And you're going, you got all that from that? That is a really – that's that's a really fanciful brain and creative brain. But it, it's, you know, come on, show me the beef. Where is the actual fossil evidence? The fact that they change their minds and they're constantly saying, well, this means we must reevaluate our position, means that whatever they said today may not be what they say tomorrow. Yeah. Well, come on then, don't give it the weight of the law. Yeah. You know, you can't go you know, force kids to teach, teach this stuff to kids and say it's the truth. When you're going to change your mind about it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a that's a big statement right there. Six seven eight nine six three five four eight two is the phone number. Six seven eight nine six three five four eight two. We're kind of working backwards in the the interview that I was going towards. So maybe we'll get to the artwork in a minute. But I but you had mentioned something a second ago about the the dinosaur dating and 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 me and Doctor Judkins had touched on this at the end of the last show kind of an icing on the cake and then in talking to you i i found out that you're you actually had first-hand experience not only with the with the bone itself but with the scientist who was uh is her mary schweitzer um uh-huh. the scientist behind it talk to us a little bit about that t-rex bone and the soft tissue that was found in there because to me this is one of those if if the evidence is enough to weigh out in a court system and say, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, the evidence shows that, and then fill in the blank, and that's mm-hmm. what we'll have you fill in that blank. Then, to me, it's it, I could almost be arrogant and say it's an open door or it's a shut door case. We're we're done here. 
in in 1995, uh, I was managing a dinosaur dig up in <clears throat> in Wyoming. Went into the local museum and hearing this old case, kind of getting no attention, was a big clump of uh, T Rex stuff. So I thought, wow, it looks like the skin's on there. So I got it out. The lady let me handle it. We photographed it, and uh, I convinced her to give me a little little fragment, which was back in a drawer of it, <clears throat> and about as big as my thumb, so I could send it off and see if, if it was muscle or bone. So I did. I sent it off for this, uh, to Mark Armitage, and he electron scanned it. He said, well, it, it is bone, but it's got collagen filaments in it. It can't be but a few thousand years old. Well, I also sent him a sample of Malachite Man, the hip bone from Malachite Man, one of them, uh-huh. and there was no collagen there whatsoever. Uh, he looked at the collagen from a, a modern human, and he said, you know, the, 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 the uh, <clears throat> difference the, the, the uh, difference between uh, T-Rex collagen and human collagen is almost indistinguishable. Wow. Well, this is pretty important stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so here... Why, why, clar- clarify why that's important, just for us well, non-science people. I mean, you know, it's a lizard. We, we say T-Rex is a lizard, a cold-blooded lizard. Uh-huh. How could his collagen be like a human and or, you mean the collagen is in that good a shape after 65 long million years? It's that good a shape that it would look still like uh, somebody stepped on chewing gum? That's what <laughs> collagen looks like. And uh, <clears throat> I, anyway, in 2007... Uh, Mary Schweitzer was getting a lot of attention because of her, uh, her the, uh, Jack Horner's T-Rex bone that they found red blood cells in and soft tissue, and it's amazing stuff. She claims to be a Christian, <clears throat> but she also believes in the millions of years and, and uh, evolution, as far as I can tell. I don't know what her Christian background is, but <clears throat> uh, she, I'd, I had read somewhere that she hadn't found collagen. I thought, well, that's strange. Why wouldn't you find collagen if you got red blood cells? Yeah. So I talked to her there at the SVP in 2007. I said, you know, I noticed you didn't have collagen. Uh, we've got some from a T-Rex bone. Would you like to look at the scans? Well, they're just probably just fungus. I said, oh, would you take a look at them? So she did, and she said, oh, it's just fungus. Well, that made Armitage really like, what? He said, I'll show you fungus. So he sends, <clears throat> sends me some scans of fungus. They look like Cheetos or something like squeezed out of a tube. You know, they don't look yeah. anything like collagen. Uh, <clears throat> I sent those to her, didn't hear anything back, and she's a busy lady, so, you know, I'm not going to pursue her on it. <clears throat> but now the, the <laughs> paleontological community are trying to really play down what, what she's done. They're trying to say, well, I know it's really not soft tissue. Well, yeah, I saw the video, man. The stuff flexes like a rubber band. So what are they it's saying soft. it is then? <laughs> They're saying it's a, uh, <clears throat> so, I, I don't know, some sort of, I don't know. They're making. I, I, I'm not sure what they're saying, like residue or something of it. But uh, is what I, I mean is what a, they're saying even scientific? Or has it been peer reviewed? Well, probably there would be a consensus that yeah, that might be an explanation for it. But they're not going to come up with a very good explanation, like this guy with a bird. Look, fellows, we you know we can't make the guy say it's not a bird. It obviously is a bird. It's like Chatterjee's bird. Yeah, we're just going to have to ignore it. And, for instance, That's frustrating. Uh, one of these uh, guys I was working with in a major museum here in Texas, uh, I didn't know much about his religious beliefs. He didn't know anything about mine. But we were friendly, and he was talking, and then he says, uh, I said something about the millions of years stuff. And he looks around out of both doors, and he says, uh, well, you know, I don't really believe in that millions of years stuff myself. But he looks around, and he says, but, you know, you got to keep your job. That Joe, thought, that goes right back to our show uh, two weeks ago. That that we started this series off on that very subject, and and uh, you, you know Dr. Bergman as we were talking mm-hmm. earlier, and and he he documented over three hundred scientists and teachers who have been blacklisted, lost their jobs for this. People, this is a real deal right here. This is mm-hmm. this is a fight for truth versus lies in in what I consider the end days. And, and, and our guest right now is telling us things that, that I would, I would submit to you this. I'll beg you, go and research this. Don't, don't just, you know, write this off as some, you know, quack radio show with, with two quack people talking about 
quack information. This is a, a qualified paleontologist who's been around the block, who's worked with the experts, who who has had the backdoor meetings, if you will, with these experts, heard things in private that they're not willing to say in public. And and yet I, I have seen Joe, you know, publicly get dismissed because in some of his research because what he's saying doesn't necessarily line up with the secular model. Or, 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 you know, pardon me for making anybody mad if I say this, but if you're listening, you're a Christian and you believe in the millions of years, it, it doesn't line up with the millions of years, the, the old age theistic, uh, view there. And, and so I just, I just, I petition you to go and look it up for yourself. And, and, me, and please, if you have any questions, 963-678-963-5482. Call in with your questions right now. There is, I can guarantee you this. There's probably, probably, uh, less than, less than a, uh, fingers amount of radio stations in America or across the globe who are doing a radio show about this right now. Uh, there's probably no other place you're going to find to ask a question. So 678-963-5482, if you want to ask Joe a question, uh, go for it. Joe, you were you were about to say something? Yeah, let me give you another example. Uh, here, back in 2001, we were digging up an allosaur out in Colorado, and uh, a buyer, <clears throat> a, a respected paleontologist and a, and a um, no, no uh, dummy there. <clears throat> he was aware of it, and he said, "Well, if you find a head, let me know." So we found the skull, <clears throat> and I was talking to him about it, and it had gotten some publicity through somebody else on the <clears throat> on the web, and they were talking about it buried in Noah's flood. And he said, "Oh, yeah, okay, I read about that thing on the web. They're talking about it buried near it in, in Noah's flood. They're a bunch of idiots." I said, "Well, it was buried in the flood." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all buried in floods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all buried in floods. Oh, like the worldwide local flood, maybe? That river that got out of its banks and spread across the entire United States and yeah. around the world? That's some river. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and how did the another, river do that? Another occasion where um, I went to uh, one of my friend's museums <clears throat> and looked at his uh, display on a T-Rex they were working on and a little film in there about it. And at the end of it, he listed <clears throat> stuff that was found with it. Well, at that point, everybody gets up and leaves the room because it's not a picture anymore. It's just reading. Yeah. Well, I sat and read the <clears throat> the whole list of things you found with it, and I <laughs> I said, hey, I see that you found, uh, uh, <clears throat> I think it's willow equisetum, the, the big giant uh, uh, fern, uh -huh. and uh, figs. There's three ecologies which don't exist together. I said, I see you found all three of those together. I said, it fits my presuppositions. Yeah, yeah. He, he just dismissed say, it. <clears throat> He couldn't say, uh, I mean, you knew what I was saying. What I was saying was, look, it's a massive flood because this extends all, all the way across Montana, uh -huh. South Dakota. It's too big for a little river. And <clears throat> you've got figs and willow and giant ferns all buried together. Uh -huh. They don't grow together with land animals, with crocodiles and fish buried in there with them. It's, you know, a, that, what a, does that tell it's us? It's a flood event, yeah. Well, yeah, I, well, I went to the Grand Canyon with uh, with Andrew Snelling, went went through there for eight days at the bottom of that thing, and he was explaining to us the the flood models that the secular science has. And, 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 and I wish that, that people, number one, would study it a little bit more, and number two, apply themselves to trying to understand the the terminology and the thought behind it, because he was talking about basically that, that continents would have to actually uh, sink – if, if I'm trying to explain this in layman terms, and I'm also a layman myself, so I'm trying to explain it in a way that everybody would understand. But picture the the oceans sitting below the continents, and and it being like water, uh, a piece of wood floating on water with multiple pieces of wood underneath it. Something had to. If you've ever taken pieces of wood and tried to press them under the water, it's very very tough to do. And he said in the secular models that this would have that that there must have been a force that pressed them under the water. Not no wait a second. He didn't say there must have been a force because secular science doesn't believe in a force something some accidental system pressed these pieces of wood these continents underneath the ocean causing them to come up over the uh, over the land numerous times throughout history and i'm sitting there going look i'm not i'm not a scientist i'll admit that but that doesn't make any logical sense to me how you could even do it once not to mention now multiply that times how many floods have there have there been joe according to secular science a dozen 
that that have well, created created these things like the Grand Canyon has been created over succession of floods, and that's how these layers formed over successions of floods washing up over the land and 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 leaving deposits, sedimentary deposits, and and I'm sitting here going, this doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm I mean I don't. That's why I'm saying I petition you to go out and study this stuff because that's that's kind of what you're saying, Joe. Is these people these scientists are seeing the evidence of one flood, but uh, but but yet. Blaming it on several floods somehow, or or some big river is that is that am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, and that's not a that that has not been their position at least uh, very much the last <clears throat> all this time. Maybe they're beginning to accept the fact that it's all evidence of flood <clears throat> floods are flood. I asked this one paleontologist <clears throat> who was doing a dig near us up there, a secular guy, a professor at college, and I said, "Where do you think all this mud and dirt and sediments came from?" Oh, well, it, it, it eroded off the Rocky Mountains. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, no way, we're in Montana out here. We're at 3,000 feet and <clears> the <throat> same level as Texas. Uh, the Rocky Mountains weren't there because the Rocky Mountains contained dinosaur strata. And uh, <clears throat> they, they, they were all flat when the flood ended. Then they got lifted up since. Sure. Uh, that didn't bury those dinosaurs out there. You, you know, there's not enough runoff and, and melted mountains uh-huh. enough to cover up a whole dinosaur and keep him uh, <clears throat> in a perfect state so he, d- he doesn't even fall apart his skin and internal organs are still there. You have to be covered up in vast layers of mud with no oxygen in it coming up out of the earth. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I don't think a lot of these guys have ever really thought about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the same thing with uh, with Mount Everest having fossil evidence, seashells and stuff up on the top of Mount Everest. And uh, I mean, how did it get there? Once again, I think if you asked a, a five-year-old how it got there, then then they would answer, well, the water obviously came up over that surface at some point. And, well, uh, yeah, that, or <clears throat> that surface raised up out of the ocean since then. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the Indians <clears throat> out here, and I, I don't have the source on it, but a lady told me one day, she said, well, you know, I read this book where the Indians out here said they watched the Rocky Mountains rise up. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> See, in the old days, in the 1800s, when... Uh, geologists and paleontologists and anthropologists were going out from the major universities and so on and, and the American Museum and the Smithsonian. They were going out collecting information from the Indians. They basically treated them like they didn't know what they were talking about. Because it's like, no, no way. You guys, this, these mountains have been here for millions of years. You uh, couldn't have seen them. Uh, but the Indians were saying, no, we saw, we saw them rise up. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's probably true. Wow. So and where, and is, stuff, that, is that that's documented somewhere? That's in a book somewhere. Wow. Uh, there's a. I've just finished my book on giants, and uh-huh. part of that is giant animals. Yeah. <clears throat> but I have some accounts in there by the Indians. They had a name for the mammoth, and they also told about. Uh, they were the, telling some. Just, just for clarity, the mammoth that supposedly existed millions of years before they yeah, did. Yeah, but well, that's been gone for at least ten thousand years. Okay. But and I've heard other. Uh, I know a fellow artist who was <clears throat> knew the Indians in in Montana. He said the Indians say that the last one they killed was in the seven, late 1700s. Yeah, somewhere in Montana, they butchered a mammoth. Oh, my goodness. Well, mountain men reported stuff like this, and they found the skin of giant sloth, which yeah. was still good. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> but they also talked about this other thing, and I can't tell you the Indian name for it right now, but he was yellow. He's about 30 feet long, and uh, he had a long tail, and he came out periodically, and they would see him. And then he would crawl back into this hole he lived in. Huh. And they almost had to be talking about some kind of a, a, a dinosaur type. Thing yeah, yeah. That probably could burrow into those uh, those hills up there in in Montana. A lot of times they're, <clears throat> um, I don't know if it's a rat gets it going, but something digs a hole back and the water starts going through and it'll create these big caves back yeah. there underneath the strata. And if you fall into one of them, you're, you might as well call your maker because you're done yeah yeah but so a big old animal like that could easily have dug a pit like that and sure. crawled into the and nobody ever ever, ever even see him again that's going to lead us right mm-hmm. into a great question that we have here uh well, let me give that phone number out one more time six seven eight nine six three five four eight two six seven eight nine six three five four eight two call in with your questions about this we've got a question from tan in, in texas who posted on facebook it says if there is collagen and red blood cells find in dinos- found in dinosaur bones showing re- recently uh, I think that's supposed to say recently. Uh, is there evidence for man and dinosaur coexisting? Well, you would have to say from the 
if you find soft tissue, almost anybody before this was known <clears throat> would say, well, flesh and soft tissue and all sorts of stuff can't last millions of years. It just can't. So it would have to be within the last, say, million years. Well, they'd have to say, well, there were hominids around them, people. You know, uh, well, then that's a big problem. Uh, we don't accept that man was here a million years ago. Nobody was here a million years ago. But if you accept that premise and you say it's, it, it's at least that old, which is still too old for soft tissue, well, man and dinosaurs live together, evidenced by the soft tissue. Okay, so what you're, what you're basically saying is is the soft tissue won't push itself back before we know that humans existed. So, so I, therefore, I therefore, I mean, they, they obviously had to have been coexisting at the same time because of the soft tissue still yeah. being found in the bone. It's like the, the carbon-14. You can't get carbon-14 if they've, you know, if they've only been gone for a couple thousand years, well, then obviously man and dinosaurs live together. Sure. Sure. Let, let's talk about the Kachina Bridge. That was what we were actually going to open the show up with, because I think that's one of the most fascinating evidences for me is is this concept that around the globe there's evidence of artwork that's been depicted on on walls, uh, burial stones, uh, 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 what's the word, the wood staffs that are that are over in the Creation Evidence Museum, like the little totem pole staffs that are that are over there, that all depict uh, man. Either fighting dinosaur or or walking by side by side with dinosaurs, and the question arises: if if archaeology or paleontology didn't really take off as a science until the late 1800s, and people weren't digging up bones in the 1700s, 1600s, or or BCs, it, I mean, we go back in time, nobody was digging up bones to put them back together in a museum. We didn't have people working with clay moldings and technology like that. So so it begs the question, if we're seeing artwork of humans and, and dinosaurs, naturally that kind of lends itself to say that, that these humans must have actually seen the dinosaurs. And so, Joe, tell us about Kachina Bridge. What's, what's, what's there? And I read a little bit about the, the controversy and some of the rebuttals back and forth, actually, of, of the secular scientists and, and, the, and the creationist view. Tell us what's going on over there. Well, two people, <clears throat> I guess they're credentialed academics, uh, Center and Cole, <clears throat> went out to the Katina Bridge, which is one of the, the big arches out there, about a mile down in the canyon. It's real dry and desolate, a little water down there, but not a place for dinosaurs, This right? is in Utah, right? Yeah, okay. and it's a remote place that 100 years ago, when they first started finding, <clears throat> putting dinosaurs together and, and doing drawings and stuff of what they might have looked like, those, whoever was down there at Katina Bridge didn't know about those books. I mean, so it's too old to say that it, they found a dinosaur book and it's too remote, and the only people out there were Indians, so you forget all this stuff that they saw some dinosaur book. How do they, they, how do they make, tell how old it is, just to clarify this before we talk well, about it? they kind of know how long it takes for the patina, <clears throat> the uh, desert varnish, uh -huh. to, you know, uh, uh, just biotic material in the, in the water and in the air starts growing over those rocks down there. It'll, it'll give them a darker surface. Okay. And if somebody's scratched in there a, 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 a drawing of some kind, if it's got patina over it, then it's going to be darker than it would have been if it were new. <clears throat> well, that's the sort of thing with the Katina Bridge. What Center and Cole were saying was, yeah, it's some kind of a, uh, a drawing by the Indians, but it's basically, it looks like a couple of worms, you know. It doesn't, doesn't look like anything. Well, that's just not typical of Indian stuff, but De uh, Dennis Swift <clears throat> has been out there numbers of times. He's just gotten back on a new expedition with close-up camera stuff, you know, I went down there with Carl Ball and a crew, and we got up. <clears throat> I put a clear mylar sheet over the over the drawing. We didn't damage it one bit, <clears throat> and I traced over it with a pencil, with a grease pencil, of what was actually there. What you see is a long neck, long tailed dinosaur, supposed to have been extinct for 140 million years. And when you get up there, there's one that's real faint. It's really covered and old. It, there's another little long neck, long tailed dinosaur over there that you can't see certainly from the ground. Well, all they did was look at that with binoculars from 30, 40 feet away. Well, you know, what they did doesn't even compare to what Dennis Swift has done, uh -huh, Carl Ball, uh -huh. Aaron Judkins, <clears throat> uh, uh, Vance Nelson, myself, and, and many others, doesn't even compare to what we've done. Well, <clears throat> and, and Dennis Swift has taken Indians out there, and they said, yeah, that's one of our drawings, uh, and yes, that's a dinosaur, or whatever you want to call it. So... It's just it's been tested just about every way possible, and it's a long neck, long tailed dinosaur, 
And uh, <clears throat> somebody's saying, well, those legs on there, that's just uh, clumps of rock or mud or something. But even if that were true, uh, if you go to the Lascaux Caves in, in France and, and Spain over there, a lot of times they're using the, the bumps on the, the ceiling to uh, be part of the drawing. Well, it's a little bit like that at the Katina Bridge. Dennis Swift got up there, and he photographed really close the legs. Well, I'm sorry, those legs have peck marks in them, too. And the tail and the body are connected by peck marks. The whole thing's connected by peck marks. What, what's a peck mark? Say, to it, clarify uh, that for me. He, he thinks probably someone took a deer tine, a sharpened deer tine, and, and chiseled it out, just whack, 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 like a you know, like you're uh, pecking on it. It's a pectograph. It's a picture okay. uh, that's been pecked out. Okay. I, I thought it looked like a stone tool, but either way, it's something sharp. And they would just maybe they drew it out with some charcoal or something, and then they just sat there and pecked it out, like a kid coloring in a, a coloring book, you know, colored all green. Yeah. But but it's a long neck, long tail dinosaur, <clears throat> and it looks just exactly like one of the the sculptures of one of the best artists of that particular long neck dinosaur, probably. Um, uh, Camarasaurus or something like that. And, and what the I'm... only way they could have known what that looked like was to have seen one because the bones are all over Utah. Yeah. But you know they erode out a few inches at a time, and you're never going to see one if, unless you dig the whole thing up. And Indians didn't do that stuff. Yeah. And you know you go back two feet, and you're in the hard rock out there in Utah and Colorado. Yeah. There's no way they could have seen the whole skeleton and decided, oh, it looks like this. You know, no way. Yeah. Yeah. They had to have seen it alive and. <clears throat> This would go back a thousand or so years. A lot of this artwork can roughly be dated to having been done about a thousand or twelve hundred years ago. So apparently the earth was considerably warmer. Uh, we're not getting global warming now. We're getting global cooling ever since the flood. It's been getting colder and colder. Uh, <clears throat> but the, wor the earth, like Utah, had to have been a lot warmer and more, more tropical for a dinosaur to have been in uh -huh. there yeah. for anybody to have seen it. Uh, my little magazine, the Mount Blanco Fossil News magazine that I published, the, one of the last issues of, was about the Katina Bridge. Uh -huh. And uh, in there also was a photograph from Colorado about the same latitude, and it was a pectograph, a big one, about oh, 10 or 15 feet long of a big, long neck sauropod dinosaur. And it's obvious what it is. And, there, and then it's on a whole wall of these other pectographs in there. So... <clears throat> To, to have a, a tropical animal be able to exist in, in Colorado and over to Utah means the tropical belt must have been a lot wider, extending all the way up into Colorado. Yeah. And that would have been a few thousand years ago, and the earth has gotten colder, the, the belt shrinks, and that's why the only reports today of dinosaurs are over in the middle of the, of the, uh, the tropical belt. And, and moving on to another one that, that's fascinating me as far as uh, artwork being on some, you actually went to the, uh, to the Incan burial sites and, and did, some, did some pretty extensive research on that. And I see that you're actually, uh, according to your website, you're actually getting a presentation on your findings together now. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, Dennis Swift. <clears throat> I was privileged to go with Dennis Swift and some pe other people over to uh, – to Lima, Peru, and to Ica, Peru, where these stones are housed in a museum, and they come from the, the graves, uh, probably from the Nazca people or the Wari. They're not really sure exactly uh, maybe who they were, but <clears throat> they're, they're old. They come out of tombs. What, what, about, watch, about how old? What, 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 about, what about what date? About 1,200 years old, somewhere okay. between 800 and 1,200 years old, is okay. the best they can figure. Uh, there are a lot of people buried out there, and, and when they buried them, they wrapped them in cotton, and they would become mummies, and in there there'd be bowls and jewelry and artifacts of different kinds. And a lot of them have these stones in there. They're about as, as big as, um, you know, a, 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 um, a cantaloupe about that size. Some of them are as big as uh, a chair, you know, that you can sit on. Wow. And some of them are elaborately decorated. Others, they'll have like uh, one to three animals on them, sometimes a person riding it, fighting it, standing there by it, being bitten by it. Sometimes they're cutting the thing's head off, uh, just all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> and these are known dinosaurs with anatomical features that weren't known uh, until about 10 or 15 years ago. And even the people that say these things are fakes made by a couple of people over there, they would have to say <clears throat> that they must have been prophets because how would they have known, standing over there in some little remote village in, in Peru, 
how would they have known the anatomical features on these these dinosaurs, sure. which we only knew about 10, 12 years ago? How would they know that? Well, I did unless they had seen them. I did read something about the the stones uh, that the person who had found them uh, said that he faked them, and then. Then went back and recanted his story and said the reason why he said he faked them was because he didn't want he he had sold them and he, mm -hmm. the pressure was coming down that he was selling artifacts and the penalty for selling artifacts was pretty stiff so mm -hmm. he said well these aren't artifacts I faked these and then later recanted his story and said no those those were those were actual artifacts that we found right. in the grave has that's that true. has that hurt the case for the stones at all. Uh, well, it, that's the that's the question you should ask. Are they faked? Let's see if they, we can find someone that said they faked them. Dennis Swift has thoroughly look, looked into that. Uh, Dr. Cabrera, the man that collected all those stones, looked into it, and uh, he said, you know, no, there's no way. Even if they did some of them, they can't. There's no way they could have made forty thousand of them. That's about how many they think have been found. Forty uh thousand. -huh. Forty thousand. So, Good lord, I didn't know that. There's that about. Many. There's probably 10,000 in the Carrera collection, and uh, we don't know what was, you know, how many Carrera saw. Now, <clears throat> to be objective, I was getting emails from a, a man in Peru in Spanish, and it's a little difficult to know exactly what he's saying, but what I could say, <clears throat> could see, is that, that uh, Mrs. Carrera, after Doctor died, uh, was still getting people bringing in stones and, you know, I don't know how whether she paid for them or they just gave them to her, but he was saying because she was getting older and not as sharp as she had been <clears throat> that she probably included some fakes into the Cabrera collection. Well, that's quite possible. I mean, why would just to clarify that, she, she was receiving stones from outsiders and just kind of throwing them into the collection, and she herself was <laughs> getting old and wasn't really doing the, well, the effort to see if they were fakes. Is that what, what you're saying? That's what this guy was saying, and <clears throat> now I don't know how he knows that, yeah. but his granddaughter, Eugenia, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> you know, she's been upset for a long time that, you know, all the scientists saying these things are fake. They're not fake. Uh, well, I, when I went over there with Dennis, my uh, mission was to prove these things were fake. I wanted to see if they were fake. Okay. Well, I looked at several of them really closely, and uh, I saw a couple of stones that I thought, and I've told people, I, you know, I think those are probably modern fakes. They they don't look like the rest of them, and the positions of the dinosaurs are wrong. <clears throat> you know, they're too modern, and so on. Well, big deal. So let's say you found all of them, 99 out of 100 were, were fake, and one was real. What does that tell you? Dinosaurs yeah, yeah. and man live together. I, I was I was just going to say down. what I mean in in your in your opinion is is the evidence starting to get. How do I ask this? Is the evidence starting to get so so uh, well established that do you see a shift in in, in thought coming, or, or is that just yeah, fanciful the, the dreaming? Evidence, the evidence is becoming more mature, and by that I mean it's been more thoroughly researched. Uh, there's been more guys putting a lot more effort into it. See, Dr. Carl Ball years and years ago was doing a lot of this stuff. He's he's done just about as much as anybody, and. <clears throat> Now there are a lot of people. A lot of people have come along. They've added to what Carl, where Carl started from, Dennis Swift, and so on, and they're going even further. Well, now there's a lot of uh, laboratory techniques available that weren't available to Carl at the time, and <clears throat> so we're testing a lot of these things. <clears throat> what the creationist needs to keep in mind is that the truth doesn't uh, the uh, the lie a lie doesn't help the truth. If we find a fake, let's say so. Yeah, we yeah. don't need a fake out there to to confirm God's creation. So let's test them. Yeah, and yeah. and how can we test it? Well, it's like all these tracks that are turning up. You know, uh, okay, it looks like a human track. Let's say, what would an evolutionist say? Well, the first thing you say, well, it can't be there because it's Permian. You know, well, there weren't even dinosaurs around then. To, you know, the Permian mammal-like reptiles were still reptiles. They couldn't turn into man yet. Okay, well, let's don't believe that. Let's say, you know, how are we going to test a track? That's imaginary. That's yeah. your imagination. Well, let's cross-section. Let's put it through an electron scan. Let's do a, uh, an MRE or something on it. Uh -huh. Let's look at the patina on there. And uh, can we find any chisel marks? All kinds of things you can do. Yeah. But you start off thinking, this is a fake. Yeah, yeah. How am I going to prove it's a fake? You know? Okay. Like that, yeah, that's a good, that's, that's, a, that's a very fair and honest <clears throat> approach. 
Because, like I've told Carl one time, we, you know, I've been digging with Carl since, since 86. And uh, <clears throat> I told him one time, I said, Carl, it's my job to prove you wrong about everything. <laughs> I like that, brother. <laughs> I like that, too. <laughs> because, <clears throat> you know, the wounds of a friend are, are sweeter than the kiss, kisses of an enemy. Absolutely. If and, your best friends that, won't tell you, you know, that you're making a mistake, then what kind of a friend are you? And, and at the end of the day, Joe, are we not all seriously just trying to make sure that we know the truth what i mean it's the it's the age-old questions that'll never die until until the the end of everything as we know it how did we get here what are we doing and where are we going when we die and and we're all trying to answer that question and i i just you know i I beg of the listeners to test the the bible says test everything hold on to what is good and avoid all kinds of evil and and sometimes you're going to hear some stuff on this show that maybe you've never heard before uh next week we're going to have barry schwartz on who is the world's leading expert on the shroud of turin and so many people that i that i run into oh the shroud of turin i dismissed that because i saw some news report about the 1988 carbon dating that rendered it uh a fake and and a medieval forgery and then I just ask them, have you have you ever heard anything else? And no, no, no. People are so quick to discount uh, something maybe that sounds a little different to them. And and <clears throat> and when you hear somebody like Joe talking about this, I mean, Joe, this is your life, isn't it? Right now, it is. That's it's become my life. It's kind of like <clears throat> when we were making a presentation out in California. This young Petty and Todgers who had been digging up in the the Miocene beds of <clears throat> of uh, South Dakota. He was saying, I dated an ash above the bones and below the bones, and I got 30 million. I said, what did you get, 30 million years? Yeah. <laughs> said, did you date the bone? No. No, we don't date dinosaur bones. He walks off like Why do know. they not date dinosaurs? You've said that several well, times during this conversation. Why, why do they not date dinosaur bones? I don't get it. <laughs> because they're not, they're not bones. They're fossils. And I told this guy, look, they're bones. Well, you're yeah. petrified bones. But even at that, why not date them? Well, we don't date them because they're stupid. Okay, well, that's stupid. <clears throat> well, they, they're not going to date them because they probably would find, they probably would get a carbon date. Well, then they'd have to toss it out and waste their money. Uh-huh. and Or they'd have to say, well, gee, it looks like every time we date one, we get a carbon date. Yeah. So, therefore, these things can't be millions of years old. They're not going to do that. Yeah. This is where the atheists have gone to hide. You know, the old the mm. hippies used to go to communes and crash pads because that's a good place to be. Yeah, yeah. Because you're there with your fellows. Well, the atheists, if they're smart and like natural history, uh, paleontology, geology is a great place to be because it's a uh, I'm okay, you're okay club. You know, yeah. hey, man, okay, if I say your stupid idea is okay, then you say my stupid idea is okay, <laughs> then we're okay, okay? <clears throat> I'm, I'm telling you, I heard a guy, get a, a, a major professor get up and he said, well, you know, dinosaurs developed wings because the lizards crawled up in the trees and jumped out after a bug and belly flopped. Climbed up in the tree, he jumped off, and belly flopped. And after a million years ago, my gosh, why don't I know? Let's invent wings. And that's how they came to be. And and there's stories like how the bear get his long tail. Well, you know, just ask these professors; they know. Uh, <laughs> let's let's I mean, close with let's close with this joke. We got about three minutes left, and and I read a story in your book. Uh, fi- what, what is, I'm sorry, what's it called, Joe? Fossil facts. Fossil facts and fantasies. And fantasies. And you, you recall the story in there about the the human fossil footprints, the human footprint fossils that are in the same area as the dinosaur footprint yeah and 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 i guess it was actually you recalling a story you had heard from from somebody else and they said well well where did they come from and it was it was aliens with cameras yep. <laughs> i can't even say it yeah. seriously joe so it was, yeah, what was, what happened there well we're working on the mammoth side on the mammoth side at waco and there was an engineer there no no schlepper he was a guy in his 60s retired he's a, he's a smart guy and uh, he was connected to uh, uh, the the big museum there in Dallas, uh, one of the paleontologists there. And uh, he, I knew that Carl, he'd been down to see Carl Ball. And I said, hey, you know, I, uh, I hear your old buddy there went down to Carl's museum and to the tracks down there. And uh, and he said that, uh, yeah, those tracks are, were made by aliens. <laughs> and I started to laugh. This engineer, who's no dummy, <clears throat> looks at me and he said, so? <laughs> And I go, oh, my gosh. You know, <laughs> so, well, here's what the guy said. He was down there with Carl. He said, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, they're obviously humans. 
I mean, you can't say they're not. And the, and the Indians didn't carve them under, you know, the limestone. So, okay, yeah. they got to be real. Well, those are made by aliens <clears throat> uh, following the dinosaurs, taking photographs, and that's how someday we'll know what they look like. And I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, these advanced aliens... Uh, which don't have to walk in the mud. They can just beam out of their little window up there and get a, a electron scan. Why do they have to have the Kodak out there walking around in the mud with no no shoes on? <laughs> they haven't invented tennis shoes yet. Nikes haven't come around. <laughs> it's superior to us. They can go through space, you know, and they can't invent tennis shoes. They're still using Kodak. <laughs> now, these are, these are you're you're cracking us up here in the studio, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's their show coming. I mean, I just looked at this guy and I thought, I can't believe my ears. <laughs> uh, my son had a comment for you, and then we're gonna we're gonna push your uh, your website and your materials. Uh, have you done any research on the El Chupacabra? <laughs> hey man, <laughs> we got the best one right here in the museum. <clears throat> it's from Blanco, Texas. He was taxidermied right after he was killed. Uh, he was poisoned. He wasn't shot. They froze the carcass. <clears throat> a friend of mine acquired the whole thing. Commissioned me to go get it uh, uh, tested or examined at a major forensics lab, which we did. <clears throat> they turned them all in. After, after they did that, they did the bones. We're making a film about it. And hopefully in a couple of months, we'll have the, uh, the the film out about it. But they're not a mangy coyote. And there's a lot more to the story than people know. <laughs> I'm going to send them to your website as soon as we get home. That website is Mount Blanco Fossil Museum. It's mountblanco.com, www.mtblanco.com. Go on there. Joe has some fascinating books, DVDs, all kinds of resources, articles. He has a new magazine out that, that you need to subscribe to. And uh, I think you'll be pleasantly blown away. Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I can't thank you enough. Next week, Barry Schwartz is a leading expert expert on the Shroud of Turin. Stay tuned. This has been What is Truth? Radio show with Dave Glander on WYMO 1300. You can say